And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's the website. Go there. I think I ju- that's the first time in, uh, I don't, let's say, three or four weeks that I've gotten that... <laughs> That intro, right? Like I said, my name is Chad White. Uh, before we get started, again, I, before we get started, that's the name of this episode. I I say that pretty much every episode. I you might you might have seen me if you're watching the video version, which I pray you are. If you're watching the video. I know you're not. I know you're watching the video version on YouTube.com/slash C Comedy or C Comedy.com where it is embedded on the very uh, page where this podcast episode is posted. And you might have seen me when the theme song is playing, Sniff My Clothes. Here's the thing. I am, the reason why we're recording in a car on a Friday (laughs) is because, uh, again, I am not able, I was not able to record in my room with the futon and the microphone and the laptop and this whole, the whole nine yards. I'm sitting in my car again, dealing with having to do this stuff in public, which I hate, which I hate doing. I hate doing it in public. But here we are doing it in public. Don't even know. I'm going to be running through my data, you know, just uh, loading up pages and stuff. And I still do have data because of uh, 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 Google's. Uh, Google's. I have Google Fi. And data is cheap, but it piles up. It racks up quickly. So I was just in a coffee shop. That also serves breakfast, I think, and it's and there are dogs allowed here. Like I'm sitting next to a dog park as well. It's in Kirkwood, if any of you care. I will also not be telling you where it is. Actually, I don't even care. It's in Kirkwood uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, somewhere off of. Oh, boy, I don't know where that cross street is. It's a just like a dog coffee shop. <laughs> Kirkwood. A lot of nice. Oh, it's off of Flat Shoals. Yeah, it's off of Flat Shoals. So if you want to go there, uh, you can. They, they serve breakfast as well. I saw pictures of the breakfast. I was going to buy some, and I, and I thought, no, I can't do it. Chad, can't do it. I've already broken my diet once today. It's Friday. Wish I could have recorded this on Thursday, which I was ready to, which I had everything set up. And all day long, I was not alone in the uh, studio space. Uh, by studio space, I mean my apartment. <laughs> And by not alone, I mean one of my roommates. No, both of my roommates were home for it's Thursday. I'm the one who doesn't have a real job. <laughs> Let's get started with this show. I want to do the first thing. I have to. There is a topic I've been trying to cover, but I don't think I'm going to be able to cover it in today's episode. Uh, for the past, I've been trying to cover it for the past, I would say, three weeks now, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, but uh, let's get with the first thing. Hulu has announced that they have 25 million subscribers. That is a staunch number compared to what they had last year. They, that is up from 48% a year ago. 48%. Now, keep in mind, this is the same network that people complained about because they're commercials, but you pay $8 and you get all of these wonderful shows and this backlog of shows plus movies. Uh, You pay $8 because they're ads or you pay $12 to get no ads, which is cheap, which is they're both cheap. They're both cheaper than Netflix. This is insane. Or you can watch live TV for 40 bucks or 43 bucks with no ads. Crazy. I don't know why people are complaining. Uh, Second, it was free about eight years ago. That wasn't the one I was thinking about. Third, there's something that I'm trying to mention in here, but I just can't. Oh, uh, Disney now owns 60% of it. Then there's Comcast, and then there's NBC Universal. Crazy, 48%. Hulu added 8 million subscribers in 2018 to in the fifth. This is from Deadline, Dawn C. Cholomitsky. I think I've read this name before because I would recognize that. Hulu added 8 million subscribers in 2018 in the fiscal year with more than 25 million total subscribers across its subscription to on-demand and live TV services. Now, keep in mind, Hulu did have a promotion. Uh, They have several promotions. I think they have one with Spotify. You pay the, you get the commercial option and uh, you can get free spot, not free spot, Spotify premium and Hulu. And that's like eight bucks, eight bucks, something like that. And then uh, students are like five bucks. 
Uh, same thing with Spotify. Students are five bucks. Then they also they also had a promotion this past uh, Christmas holiday season, actually, because I think it just ended a couple uh, last week that if you have never had Hulu before, new subscribers, five dollars for an entire year, five dollars per month, five dollars, that's 60 bucks to watch all this TV. People complaining. Anyone you want to make shoes. Okay. The company, which will soon be controlled by Disney after years of equal ownership shared by majority stakeholders, Disney, NBC, Universal, and Fox, has seen a dramatic 48% year-over-year increase in subscribers. Hulu said the figure catapults, quotes, end quotes, uh, in ahead of the nation's largest cable satellite cable and satellite television providers. Given that most of the 25 million are subscribing to the main Hulu as VOD offering and not the pay TV bundle, however, that comparison doesn't seem completely apples to apples. Who also trails Netflix? Yeah, whatever. Netflix has 137 million, uh, 58 million in the US. Who cares? Hulu's wonderful. Although I will say, I don't think it's available across any, in any different countries, which really hurts it. But they do offer shows from the UK and a couple of Spanish shows. So as soon as they make it available across the world, they could be killing it. And I've been saying, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Who's a better network than uh, Netflix? That being said, Hulu will cancel comedies left and right. Crazy. The company's advertising revenue revenue increased more than 45% to a record 1.5 billion last year, and its advertiser base grew 50%. Advertisers may well be enticed by Hulu's audience demographics. The median age of a Hulu viewer is 32, nearly 25 years younger than the average broadcast TV viewer, which is important. So that wouldn't that advertising uh, statistic, you know, demographic do, what what? Yeah, advertisers don't really, they're not really paying attention to Netflix because they don't have ads. But Hulu does use ads. Ergo, they have an ability to reach the younger audience. Now, given I haven't had the commercial option for uh, a few months now, I think it's been since uh, fall. Since I, like, fall is when I said I'm going to, I was I was watching a show and I said, these commercials are getting too much for me. I just got to, I'm going to get to the 11, the, the 11, I think it's $11. I'm going to get to that tier and I'm going to pay it once. And then I forgot to turn it off. And here we are months later, four or five months later. Viewers who subscribe, this is interesting, to Hulu Plus Live TV spend about half of their time watching on demand or recorded programming. To fuel its momentum, Hulu upgraded its streaming technology to improve stability and reduce buffering and increased its its spending on exclusive content, which is which is to say that uh, they bought up shows like ER, um, Lost, King of the Hill, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers, Living Single, and Animaniacs. Uh, but a lot of those shows, ER, Lost, King of the Hill, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers, Living Single, and Animaniacs were broadcast shows um, and... You know, uh, ABC has lost, and I think all of ABC. I think most of ABC shows. I don't. I don't want to say all of them because I know a lot of Martin. But most of ABC shows. ER was on NBC. Most of e, uh, NBC shows. Fox had King of the, King of the Hill, uh, Family Guy, and Bob's Burgers. Most of those shows were on these broadcast networks, who now who all own a part of the Hulu, no matter how small it may be, but they own a part of Hulu. I mean, that it makes sense that they would become exclusives. Uh, but now when you get to uh, real exclusives, like what Netflix, and I'm not talking about originals, I'm talking about streaming exclusives, like what Netflix has, they have, um, what's an exclusive they have? They have the CW shows. You can't find the CW show. Do they? Yeah, yeah. You can't find the CW shows on Hulu or Amazon unless you buy them on Amazon. Amazon. Uh, and for Hulu, they used to be on Hulu. You used to, you used to be able to watch them with commercials. But what I but uh, one one day, not one day, <laughs> CW set up a, a contract with uh, the Netflix, and so after two weeks after the season ends for a particular show, it goes right on Netflix, which is a very lucrative contract to have because CW has even though they don't have the <laughs> the highest ratings they have some of the most millennial driven shows you compared to freeform they have the most uh, millennial driven shows such as uh, I was gonna name DC shows um, uh, uh, Roswell <laughs> was that on the CW 
<laughs> Gossip Girl. I'm just naming shows from UPN uh, or the WB. Uh, what, uh, what shows are on? I know Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because that's the only one I watch. Supergirl, Valor, canceled. Uh, no Tomorrow, canceled. <laughs> so I'm going to start naming a bunch of canceled CW shows, which there are a lot of. Let's not forget that. Okay, so there's that. I just, I'm skimming through the, the the article right now. There's that. Congratulations to Hulu. 25 million subs. That's nothing to balk at. I remember a couple years ago when uh, Netflix had first... There's a car parking behind me. Let's see how he does. Uh, oh, he's really close to my tail. My car looks short, but uh, you're really close. Anyway, <laughs> I remember a couple years ago uh, when, when Netflix was... When the numbers were just jumping high and high, now they're now they're kind of they're peaking and they're kind of leveling out. They haven't they didn't add any uh, great numbers over the past oh boy, past a uh, few months. I think past fiscal year actually. Uh, but uh, who that was Netflix. Uh, but uh, Hulu is uh, very interesting in that this little engine that could. These three networks came together and said we're gonna friggin' push it. We're gonna push it. Push it on through. And here we are. It was at uh, 25 million subs, which is great, which I think Crackle, uh, Verve, VRV, that one that has all internet ones. Uh, College Humor has a, str- a, a streaming service called Dropout, which, come on, guys. Um, but yeah, I think all these other networks would love to have even Hulu's numbers. And I don't, I don't know if Amazon's numbers were really talked about because you can either subscribe to Amazon Prime and you can have the music and the video and stuff or you can subscribe to Amazon Video and that's I think that costs more than subscribing to Amazon Prime don't quote me on that it might be eight dollars and the last thing I want to talk about uh, is you know what let's talk about Netflix actually no no no. let's talk about the next in the next uh, thing oh god I have another story about Roku I talked about Roku last week. Roku, speaking of 25, Roku, this is from The Wrap, Roku's written by Sean Birch. (laughs) Roku's stock rockets 25% on massive increase in streaming hours. Device maker said 7.3 billion hours of content were streamed during Q4, or about three hours per active users, uh, per active user every single day. Huh, that's cool. I gave my mom and my stepdad a Roku Ultra. I got the expensive. I got the, but it was a stick. <laughs> it was the Roku Ultra stick, but it was expensive. I got it for them. The 4K one. I put it in the TV and it works beautifully. It's got the extra antenna, make it look all nice and beautiful. They got, they're connected to every, all the streaming, all my streaming services because I pay for them, but I'm connected to all their cable services because they pay for them. <laughs> They can watch whatever they want to watch. But I was in an apartment complex recently, and I was in the lobby, and they were streaming uh, music via the, I don't know what this guy just said, but he, he was talking to his dog, and it was in a weird voice, and that is the whitest thing I've ever heard. Um... <laughs> But uh, but I was in this lobby and they were playing music via the Roku because I had a TV up and I saw it and they were streaming the music and if they're open eight hours a day, that's definitely adding on and I mean, guarantee they're not the only ones doing that obviously. So you know that's just that's just inflating numbers. It's not fair. It's like someone putting on uh, uh, I don't know a Netflix a show on Netflix and then going to sleep, which I do mostly every Sunday, <laughs> taking a nap. <laughs> Put on one of those hour-long animal documentaries. Go to sleep. <laughs> Wake up. It's three episodes later. <laughs> uh, if it's not narrated by David Attenborough, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> Roku shares skyrocketed 25% on Monday after the popular over-the-top device maker revealed streaming hours. Whoa. And active hours had spiked during the fourth quarter. Roku, in its press release, said its viewers streamed 7.3 billion hours worth of content during Q4, a 68% year-over-year increase. Crazy. The company also reported it topped uh, 27 million active uh, users, a 40% year-over-year increase that puts it in line with analysts' estimates. Those figures indicate Roku users are streaming about 270 hours of content per quarter, or nearly three hours each day. Go on, girl. Get your run on. 
Now this is good. This is good for Roku, which is, I think, the number one streaming device. Don't quote me on that, because that might not be true. Wall Street responded enthusiastically with uh, Roku shares closing at $42.18 that day. Welcome to it's a welcome site for Roku shareholders who have been battered in recent months with the company stock dropping from a high of 76 per share last fall following its Q3 earnings report in November. There was, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I like stocks. I like to follow business. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it if you talked to me. But I love the fault. There's a dog peeing over there. That's why I looked. <laughs> I looked over. Uh, you know how I feel. About, I hate dogs. You know how I feel about dogs. I hate them. But I, I, but I have I have the app where I just follow a bunch of stocks. I have I invested in a few stocks. I've lost a lot of money on stocks, Blue Apron, and Roku was when it was introduced. I think it was a year ago at this point. Q3. It was like yeah, yeah, maybe maybe a year ago, and it it came in high, and I was like I was so excited. I wanted to buy stock. I think it came in at twenty dollars. That's how much stocks were for Roku. I think twenty or thirty dollars, because I remember going. I want to buy it, and then it went, and then I think like a, uh, a couple days later, uh, maybe even a week later, it was super high, and I thought I, I can't I can't afford this right now because again I was I didn't have a real job. Uh, I still don't. <laughs> But I always, but I was always monitoring Roku, and then seeing it fall because uh, it was it was at seventy six. You know, close. To, you know, you're close to hundred bucks per share. That's crazy. That's good for a company like this. But then you know, seeing it fall <laughs> is very sad. This is uh, interesting. Roku. So there's uh, there's also there's also Apple TV and Google's Chromecast, but it's also the only one that is. It's kind of the, I would say it's the Hulu. It's the, uh, it's the meeting between the two. You know, Apple TV, they're going to have their own shows and stuff, and you can only use so many apps. Uh, and then you can only use so many apps for Chromecast. You can't even use Amazon Prime over there. But for Roku, you got all the apps. You got all the networks created apps, all cable networks, all the streaming networks, uh, platforms made apps, music. You got everything. You pay $50 for this stick, plus, or the box, or $100 for the box, plus, Roku is going to start doing their own originals. So they have uh, so they have a Roku channel, I believe, uh, which I think I mentioned last week. I don't remember these things, but they you you can watch free shows, unlike uh, much like Vudu. Uh, you can watch free shows and free movies with ads over there. And then they're going to start making a premium one, like I mentioned before. Where it's uh, you, you can you can watch the Showtime, the Stars, the Epics, and it's all rolled into one price, and so a bunch of other channels is all rolled into one price. Interesting. So we'll see. We'll we'll keep monitoring that and seeing where uh, Roku stock goes. All right, let's go to break. Let's go to a real quick break, and then uh, we'll come back. We'll talk about uh, another Netflix story. I'll get back. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back from break. Uh, I, let's see what we did on the break. I got out. I played with a couple of dogs. <laughs> they gave me little doggy kisses, as white people call them. We hung out. I, I threw a ball to a dog. I'm watching one guy throw the ball again to a couple of dogs. We uh, It was just a good time. Uh, you know, we dogs love me. I love dogs. I hate dogs. There's some nice townhomes down here. Nice townhomes. Anyway, let's get back to let's get back to the show so I can go home. It's uh, five o'clock on a Friday, and I need to put this up. Uh, I did have another story I wanted to cover, but I did not read it, so we're gonna skip over it. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Let me talk about this. Black Monday. This is a show on Showtime starring Don Cheadle, Re- Regina Hall, uh, Andrew Rannells. Horatio Sands is in it. Paul Shear is in it, and a few other people. Uh, it's a show. It's a period show that takes place in the '80s, and uh, it's about or the late '70s. I don't remember the '80s or '70s. It's about um, people on Wall Street, a company on Wall Street, just trying to survive. And Andrew Rannells, I think, is well. I, well, Don Cheadle is obviously the main character, but I think Andrew Rannells is the second lead. Uh, great show. Casey Wilson's in it. I think it's created by David Casp. Uh, it's a really, it's a good show. It's a great show. I was really enthralled. It's a half-hour comedy. 
um, Don Cheadle. It's like it's a bunch of coked up people. Just it's it's great. It's a half hour comedy, and uh, imagine coke and all that stuff and sex. That's all that's happening in the eighties. I say it as if I don't even know what that stuff is. Like all the coke and the sex. Oh gee, I've never seen it in the TV show before. Really good show. Really check it out. Uh, and Smilf season two is is back. I did not watch it. Uh, I will see how this stuff with Frankie Shaw blows over. <laughs> But she's in trouble for some sexual allegations. Not assault, but allegations. Listen to last week's episode if you care. All right, moving on. This is the final story. This is from Vox. It's loading up, that's why. Written by Todd Vanderwerf. I know Todd, not personally, but I know his work. He used to be with uh, AV Club, I believe. Netflix's upcoming content crisis in one chart. The biggest shows on Netflix are shows owned by other companies. All right, now before I get started with this, I think I've mentioned this before. Netflix, there's two things about it. You gotta know. They create originals and then they acquire well, they acquire things. They create originals and then they acquire more things. So they acquire things. Uh, let's start with the create originals. They create originals such as I don't know the 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 Punisher show. That one's coming up in a couple weeks. They create originals like that. They uh, what else? I don't. What what's in a Netflix original? They create originals. I just saw a car hit a curb. <laughs> <laughs> they create originals. <laughs> they create originals, such as the Netflix, Marvel, Dis- the Disney shows, the Punisher show, the uh... oh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. They create shows like that. So that's that. Then they acquire shows that are that have already been made in other countries or that are being made. They acquire movies that are being made. Like I would say, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, but I think. I don't know, maybe that was an acquired. Was that bought or was that acquired? I don't know. Uh, they acquire Cuckoo. They acquire shows like that. Um, let's see. Uh, and these are shows that if they're airing somewhere else, they can put it up on their service and throw the Netflix logo on front of it. And no one's the wiser because they're distributing it. Jesus. You didn't have to do that, sir. But they're distributing it, and no one in the other country, America's the wiser. Because I think uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a show that they distribute in a different country. Uh, And then they acquire shows and uh, for, I guess, rebroadcast. So, like, Friends, uh, which is the the impetus of this. Friends, uh, The Office, Parks and Recreation, Grey's Anatomy, New Girl. They acquire those shows. And they just buy them from NBC or whoever and say, hey, can we air this? And then ABC's like, yeah, give us money, baby, which is what happened with Friends. Most viewed Netflix shows as a percentage of all Netflix shows. Uh, The Office, Friends, Park and Recreation, Grey's Anatomy, New Girls, Supernatural, Shameless, Gilmore Girls, Frasier. All of those shows rank high, way high. And when I say high, I mean super high. I'll show you the chart. They rank higher than the uh, Netflix originals. Now, as you see here, The Office is high as butts. You go down here, all the way down here, the first new show is under Frasier. And it, I mean, the first show that's owned by uh, uh, Netflix is uh, Orange is the New Black. Black Horseman, Bojack Horseman, <laughs> Black Horseman. It's uh, the spinoff to Bojack Horseman, and it's a, it's a hor- it's about a horse that's black. The chart by Rainy Mola visualizes data that Jumpshot collected from 100 million anonymized web devices. <laughs> Every time one of those devices used a web browser from within the U.S. to visit a Netflix page and play a show or movie, it counted as a view for the survey's purposes. The survey was conducted between January and November of 2018. That's 11 months. 
for Can't Count. So Netflix does not put out the numbers for shows that are watched uh, or movies. But two weeks ago, they put out numbers for Bird Box. They said 45 million people watched it. And that's a big thing. They have 137 million subscribers. Now, the, the way they count it is 40, uh, these people watched over 70% of the film. So that means at least two thirds of the film, little raft, 70 minutes, people watched. 70 minutes? No, that's the movie's two and a half hours, I think. 70% of the film, people watched. That's a lot of film to cover, to count as a view, too. Which is very important. That's the that's the reason why they're bragging about it. Because I th- I don't think they've I don't think a lot of anything has been watched like that. Here's a bus. Overall, this data tracks with information from other surveys and offhand comments, namely that most viewership on Netflix gravitates toward audience favorites that first aired on other networks, which Netflix itself does not own. Which is uh, which is uh, a reason why I think they fought so hard to keep friends. It was news a couple of weeks ago that Netflix paid a hundred million, something like that, like a stupid amount of money, which I sure is in an article I could have kept reading, uh, to NBC to keep airing, um, to keep friends, to keep friends, you know, for one more year uh, instead of putting it on Hulu, which you know, it probably should be on Hulu. You know, Cheers is on, Cheers is on uh, Amazon, Hulu and Netflix, but I watched it on Netflix. Wonderful show. In the chart above, red bars denote the shows whose streaming rights are controlled by studios that have their own streaming services in the works and thus might pull them from Netflix at any time. All right, so they give you, uh, Todd gives you, Todd did work at AV Club. I remember reading his reviews. You don't forget a name like Vanderwolf or Chomolinsky from Deadline. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So Netflix networks are only able to collect the money they make directly from selling ads from charging cable company carriage fees, cable companies, uh, carriage fees. With your cable company, you you hear about this all the time. Uh, Viacom networks will go dark from Dish, uh, from Dish. You know if uh, they don't get a certain amount of money. You know stuff like that. Disney networks will go dark from Comcast, which I think was the latest one. I don't remember. Who cares? Production companies. Just like it's like subscription fees. Like they, like uh, a, a cable company will subscribe to a, a, a set of networks, Viacom, for instance, to get Comedy Central. They get enough money, and MTV and the rest. <laughs> Paramount Network, uh, which is this, which is uh, next week's episode of the Constitutionals. I mean, no, 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 of News Time, the Paramount Network. One year later. Production companies collect all of other uh, all of the other streams of revenue, like DVD sales, and selling reruns of the show in syndication. Thus, airing a show like The Office was great for NBC, as any network can make lots of ad money from a hit show. But there's substantially more money involved for NBC Universal, which produced The Office and will make money off of it in perpetuity. Perpetuity. Now, a traditional TV network has a little uh, hack to the system in that it is uh, usually part of a gigantic corporation that owns a production company. In, in the case of The Office, for instance, the show aired on NBC and was produced by NBC Universal. So all the money it made from ad revenue to DVD sales to streaming sales to so many other revenue streams went back to the same place. NBC Universal. That, which is why uh, creators tend to have such tight ties with networks. Dan Gore. Why did I say Dan? Oh, because he was on Doughboys this past week. It's a podcast about two comedians eating food and reviewing it. Um, Which I thought it sounded stupid too, but cut to a year after, a year later, a year and a half after it started, I'm listening to it. Well, like uh, Amy Schumer has 
uh, a, a bunch of shows. Well, I feel bad. We'll get canceled. I guarantee you. They aired their last episode. It's not going to get picked up. But, you know, Paper Kites is her production company, uh, which has close ties with uh, NBC, you know. Tina Fey's Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt before going over to Netflix, went over to, was at uh, NBC. Great news, which is Tracy Wigfield, who worked on 30 Rock with who? Tina Fey and Robert Carlock. That was on NBC before it got canceled after season two. I like that show. I just hated, it felt too much like 30 Rock, but which is fine. I really don't care about that. But I just hate, one thing I ha- I just hated about it was, uh, they they were trying to put the main character and uh, her boss together, and I just don't like that. You know how I feel about New Girl. I love New Girl. Hate Zoe Deschanel and Jake Johnson's uh, characters being forced together in every single episode. Just put them together and get it over with. So for a long time, Netflix was reliant. Before, remember before Originals and before House of Cards, uh, RIP, and I didn't watch the show. In uh, 2013, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013 or 2012, something like that. Before House of Cards, before Orange is the New Black, they didn't have original shows. They were they were reliant uh so much so on uh these uh on these on acquiring shows like the office 30 rock they were, yeah 30 rock was on there 30 rock i think community i'm wrong uh but all these other shows i'm going to stop naming nbc shows too uh but they were they were so reliant on that that was how they made their money even though they're in debt i'm reminded of that lyric and uh was it uh, no more parties in LA is a Kanye song. No friends. What is the song I'm thinking about? The fret, the song with friends, <laughs> and his cousin. I think Kendrick Lamar's on it, and that's no more parties in LA. Uh, but he's he's talking about how uh, he doesn't. His peop, friends ask him for money, even though he they know he's in debt. I gotta look it up. <laughs> This is really pissing me off. I was listening to Kanye earlier. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oop. Oop. Oh, God. Uh, I'm screwing up all over the place. You know what? We're recording in the car. It's fine. We're all having a good time. <laughs> uh, real friends. No one I was in debt. No, that's not. But still couldn't say no. What song is that? I don't care. Get back to the show, chat, so we can end this stupid show. Oh, apparently BoJack Horseman and Orange is the New Black are owned by uh, Lionsgate Television. Whoa! Oh, no, that's no, Orange is the New Black is owned by Lionsgate. Oh, that's crazy. I thought that was, oh, I didn't know that was a co-production. Oh, okay. So that that has a, that has a chance of, Lionsgate also laid off 25 people, but that was a movie department. And they also own Nerdist, which also canceled their podcast uh, department. So that's curious uh like but that was like a year ago <laughs> but either show bojack horseman orange and new black they could go to different networks wow that's crazy hmm and frazier's owned by cbs's tv library cbs tv but again frazier is licensed out to all major streaming companies I don't think I mentioned that. Cheers, Cheers is, but Fraser is as well. Like you can watch a bunch of CBS. CBS they used to not put their stuff on um, streaming platforms, and then they made the CBS All Access, and that was like what eight, four to ten dollars, something like that. Four to eight dollars, excuse me. No, four to ten. Ten without commercials, four with commercials, I think. And um, and then you know, I think it was like two months, two or three months ago, or a couple of months ago. Rather, they put up uh, they they started allowing for their for their back catalog of TV shows and movies to be on streaming services. So that's why you can watch Star Trek on Amazon and Hulu and uh, Frasier on oh, Cheers on everything. There are no guarantees that Netflix can ever have a sh- these show continue to these shows continue to live on here. Yep, a hundred million dollars. They paid a hundred million dollars to keep friends for one single year. That's a that's a crap ton of money. I was gonna curse. That's a crap ton of money. 
And then, uh, you know, of course, we got Disney coming in uh, with their streaming service, Warner Media coming in with their streaming service, which owns shows like Grey's Anatomy and Friends. Oh. Uh, they could, you know, in uh, in late 2019, Warner Media could launch Warner's app. And then they could say, hey, come November 2019. We're going to have all of Friends, and you can only watch it here. Which is the issue. All these pe- all these, all these companies are coming up with their own streaming services, and now and everything is going to be so divergent, and we're just going to be back where we are with cable. I just want to be able to watch everything in a couple of places, not watch everything in every place. Huh. This is why... Netflix keeps making these shows and movies. They just keep producing them. This is what Todd said. That's what Todd said. Uh, it's a very strange situation. I don't. I don't know where it's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know where it's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to head. Where it's going to be headed. Where it's going to be headed. I don't know where it's going to headed. I don't know where it's going to be headed. Uh, but you can guarantee Netflix is going to keep throwing paint at the wall, seeing if it all sticks. It won't, of course, obviously. But uh, it's got to keep where it's going. Making a network is very strange. Go on, brother. Get your jog on. I love seeing people run, and I always say that in my head. I love that. But making, making it, having a network is very strange, and uh, you just got to see what sticks, what lands, and what doesn't. Keep the subscribers. That's the name of the game. You want to keep subscribers. You also, the name of the game is also growing subscribers. <laughs> uh, Netflix will not be... You know, plateauing at 100, you know, having 137 million subscribers, that's great. 58 million in the U.S. That's wonderful. But having 140 is even better. Having 141, even better than that. You just want, they want to keep growing. Amazon, Hulu, Crackle, they're all in the same business. You're welcome, Crackle, for the shout out. Anybody has Sony's watching? If you like what you heard here, why don't you head on over to cpluscomedy.com where I just put up an interview. Guys, like I said I was going to do, guys and gals and people in between and people outside of that because I will get notices and messages. I just put up a new interview with Steve Lemmy and Kevin Heffernan of Broken Lizard. It was great. I typed it up. We had a good time. I've talked about it before. It's about four weeks old. But I just put it up. So go ahead and check it out. Seriously, check it out. It's a good interview. And also head on over to seabuscounty.com uh, to listen to this podcast, the application podcast, which is now defunct. <laughs> and you can watch News Time. You can watch a video version of this show on youtube.com slash comedy, where you can also see the premiere show for the website news time which is a great show it's a weekly news show it's like the daily show except less funny and about entertainment news instead of the real actual news that matters speaking of building walls we can and uh build a wall around youtube.com slash people's comedy to keep out the people who don't like comedy uh seriously don't uh, support bad people uh, such as people in charge of the free world. <laughs> this is not a political show. Speaking of not political, really quick, people who should not have opinions, such as uh, barbers and barbershops <laughs> who believe in conspiracy theories, do not talk to me <laughs> at all. You see, As you can see, I got a fresh bald fade around the head. I don't know why this lady's stopping. A uh, fresh bald fade around the head. <laughs> And this, but the barber talked to me for an hour straight and he kept stopping and he kept trying to get me to look at him as he was talking. That was the worst. But he kept talking to me about how he, this right now, I'm I'm making this in a tunnel, in a vacuum right now, but R. Kelly is getting taken down because uh, of a bunch of sex things he did with a bunch of children, not children, a bunch of young women who were not of proper sex age, which is 18, age of consent. And they probably, I don't, it's, anyway, R. Kelly's a bad dude. 
And my man, I have, and then he's, I have never sided with white people, defended white people, white celebrities so much so in my life. This man was like, duh, duh, they're coming to take us down. Why, why does a black man have to go through this? And in, in my head, I'm I like, well, not in my head. I started defending out loud. I was like, I was like, you see, uh, Louis C, Louis C K, Harvey Weinstein, all of these white people are getting taken down. <laughs> Everybody's getting taken down, dude. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you see, once you get to a, a certain level of fame and black and black and the being black, you get, yeah, you, you just can't have anything. Bill Cosby, they took down Bill Cosby, R. Kelly. I was like, no, these, they did these things. <laughs> Bill Cosby did these things. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, they all did, Matt Lauer, they all did these things. How can, what are you not even making sense? <laughs> and then he said, he said, I don't know if I believe that Bill Cosby did that. I was like, what? look, even if you don't believe all of the women, one of them is still too much. <laughs> One is still too much. All right. This show is not political, but God bless America. That guy pissed me off. And I kept trying. I was like, I, I kept just, I was like, hey, man, listen, you got like these people were atta- uh, attacked or they didn't they didn't give proper consent. And you, come on, man. It's not just about this black and white thing. People, did, these dudes did this. Any Hoosers. That being said, it's not a political show. It's not kind of show. Just don't don't have an opinion. All right. Don't have an opinion. Just keep everything to yourself. Don't support people who are bad. The end. Play video games. Play Smash. Which I am so close to unlocking everybody. I think I'm at 40 people now. I'm taking it slow. Same thing with Red Dead. I'm only in chapter two. I've had it for a couple of weeks. Okay, let's go. Uh, YouTube.com slash people's comedy. Watch news time. Great. This week's episode is a is about the gold, the Golden Globes. Oh, uh, separating the comedy musicals, the comedies and the musicals from each other at the Golden Globes. Watch it next week. I told you it's going to be about Paramount Network anniversary show episode. Check it out. Thank you for listening. I very much appreciate it. Follow us on Instagram at Seabus Comedy. Follow me on Instagram at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Uh, I don't know. Is that all we have? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Seabus Comedy. Me at Chad Black White. Do it. Do the thing. I love you so much. Thank you. Goodbye.